And uh, welcome to the Cape Elizabeth uh, School Committee meeting for December 14th, 1999. Um, and just uh, making note that this is the last formal business meeting um, of the uh, um, of the uh, millennium. Millennium. Uh, no, well, see, it's really not the millennium. It's really not the last one of the millennium. Because um, I actually had that down, and then I was kind of thinking about it. And if I'm correct, it's really the last business meeting of the 1900s. Is that right? So um, anyway, welcome. Uh, the first item on our agenda for this evening is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. Uh, next on our agenda is adjustments to the agenda, and I know that, that we do have a couple of those. I'd like to suggest under recognition that we move that. Um, we have a number of students who are involved in a, um, another activity that will be here later that are being recognized this evening. Um, so if we can be flexible on that and, and when, they're, when they do arrive. Uh, and we also were fortunate enough to um, and Mary's looking for the resume now um, to secure a, a, a position in a Spanish teacher. Um, but it's something we need to take action on now, uh, otherwise we might lose the candidate. And there aren't too many Spanish teaching candidates around, so that will be coming in if we could do that under, under new business. So it would be 11D? Uh, yes. Um, any, any other adjustments to the agenda? Okay, um, we'll move on to approval of October school board meeting minutes. Were there any comments or um, adjustments that needed to be made? Um, moving right along to uh, comments from our uh, high school representatives. sort of a downtime for the high school because it's between sports seasons and everything. But we've all been very busy with academics. But um, yeah, very busy is an understatement. <laughs> um, the f winter sports season has started. Uh, the girls basketball, boys basketball, and hockey have all had their first games and they all won. Uh, track has its first meet January 8th. Um, but the team this year is much larger than it was last year. So I think we're going to have a good season. Uh, swimming is still practicing at the South Portland pool, as far as I know, but the Cape pool should be done soon, I think. So they're hoping that it will be done soon. Um, and Nordic had a meet last Saturday, and the boys finished third out of 12 teams, and the girls finished fifth out of 12. So they did well. Um, for any of you who don't know, the winter concert for band and chorus was last night, um, and it went very well. The wind symphony, as always, was great, but I was personally very impressed with the symphonic band, which is basically all freshmen. Uh, they sounded great. And also the choruses under the direction of Mr. Groth have just improved tremendously over the past year and a half. So that was really good to see. Um, let's see, mock trial, which is where I believe Kelly and Chris, who will be later honored as National Merit Scholars or whatever, um, are right now. We were eliminated last Friday by Falmouth, unfortunately, in the semifinals. But we had a good season, and we all had fun. So that was good, but we're done with that now. Uh, the math team had a meet last Wednesday at Deering, and we were second out of, I think, about 10 schools in the small school division and fifth overall. Um, the AIDS awareness group last week sponsored an observance of AIDS Awareness Day with ribbons and announcements, things like that. And also the Amnesty International group uh, did an observance with ribbons for Human Rights Day last week. And Amnesty International also um, organized a representative from the Maine Youth Center to come speak to us last week 
about the use of the restraining chair, which had been, which had caused Amnesty International to put the Maine Youth Center on their list of human rights violators. So a representative from the Youth Center came and talked to us, or talked to students who were interested about how uh, they used the chair appropriately, and so that was um, a good thing for them to do. Um, the school's been doing several holiday projects, um, service projects. The natural helpers, as I've done in previous years, are selling candy canes to benefit baby families. The SAC, this coming Saturday, will be going to the Barbara Bush Children's Hospital at Maine Med, and I think we'll be making cookies and playing games and things like that. <coughs> there. And the math department, this is something new this year, the math department is sponsoring a, or sponsoring a cape uh, part of the Coats for Kids drive, which I believe is run by the Salvation Army. I'm not sure about that, but we are doing a collection of coats for needy children in the Portland or Southern Maine area. And so far we have over 500, which is incredible. And the last day is tomorrow, so that's <coughs> gone really well. Uh, just a few more things. The junior research paper under academics is the biggest thing that's happened. We finished our research papers, as some of you know, last Friday, and that was a big worry for a lot of us, but it's done now, and we're all feel pretty good that we can actually, you know, write a 15-page paper. It's the first time a lot of us have done it. Uh, the junior class will also be sponsoring a millennium dance this Saturday as a fundraiser for the prom. And finally, I'm sure you have heard or will hear from Dr. Forcella about the planning workshop that happened the first day of the Thanksgiving, or Monday of Thanksgiving vacation. But just from a student's perspective, it was a really great thing for students to be able to come, hear what teachers had to say, voice their own opinions, and hear the similarities, a lot of similarities between the two. That was really encouraging. So I just thank whoever, I, I don't know if it was you that arranged that, but whoever allowed students to be able to participate in that, it was a great opportunity. So, thank you. There's not much more to say. Um, but uh, I'll t say that the facilitators um, last week went down to the middle school and met with the eighth graders again. And that's a, a continuation of our monthly meetings with the eighth graders, um, with the high schoolers. And we, uh, our discussion, uh, this discussion topic was um, teacher-student relations. And um, that, went out, that went off pretty well. Um, and uh, probably this weekend and, and for the rest of the school year, we'll be hearing back from colleges now. So people are getting early acceptances. and or being uh, denied from their schools. But um, so a lot, of the, a lot of the seniors are hearing back. So that's about it. That's great. Any questions? Uh, questions for Elizabeth or John? Yeah, I've got one. If you do have coats for children, where would you drop them off? Um, at school, I believe they're being collected in the math department. So if, if you go to the high school and drop an office. So go to the office at the high <coughs> Well, I'm just, I mean, we've got an audience, you know. Right? Yeah. Uh, on television, so yeah. if, <laughs> and tomorrow's the tomorrow's last day. Tomorrow's the last day. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Good job. Um, comments from our middle school representatives. The dance for the seventh and eighth graders was Friday the 10th, and we did really well, so it was really successful. And it was a theme dance, it was a snowball dance. So we had a winner in the seventh and eighth grade who was uh, king and queen, and we had a winner in the seventh, uh, in the seventh grade, and it was prince and princess. And um, the eighth graders had MEAs, which started November 29th and it went to December 3rd, which was also the same week that the seventh graders went to Kiev. It was their outdoor experience for the year and they learned about trusting one another, why drugs and alcohol are bad, and they had occasional physical cha challenges. Also that week, the eighth graders made a Millennium Time Capsule, which will be open when we graduate, and it includes tapes of our favorite music from like recent times, timelines, baby pictures, and recent pictures, and video skits that we performed at the high school. Uh, the school had a class geography bee, and the winners from each class is going to a big, bigger geography bee, and Christmas vacation starts next Thursday. Um, the 7th and 8th grade boys basketball season started, and they have now played seven games. And the outcome of the 8th graders was they won four and lost three, and the 7th graders had the same. And the auditions for the middle school play Gone with the Breeze are taking place this week. 
The sixth grade social is going to be held at Happy Wheels. Oh, the fifth grade will be around the same time, but the sixth grade is going to be on January 21st from 3 to 5. And the fifth graders are holding final elections for their grade to join student council, so soon we'll have a new addition to our student council. And we collected 540 toothbrushes for Mrs. Dana's advisor class, who's sending toothbrushes to students in Paraguay. And the fifth and sixth graders had their band concert last week on December 8th for chorus band and the seventh grade jazz band. And tomorrow on December 15th is the seventh and eighth grade band and chorus and the eighth grade jazz band concert. And the food drive that we just had was very successful. Are there any questions? Questions for our middle school reps? Good job, thank you very much. <laughs> um, our next uh, item is communications. Um, any from the board? We'll move on. Um, on the agenda is recognition. I guess we will um, continue to hold until we uh, see the, the, the bulk of um, uh, students that are being recognized uh, come in. And we'll move on to the superintendent's report. As the students had mentioned, um, we <coughs> did have a, a workshop, um, future planning workshop, where we had approximately 250 people, uh, staff members and community members involved. And what I wanted to do is take a little bit of time to explain what the next steps are. Uh, we have uh, a facilitator that I will meet, be meeting with on, on Friday who will facilitate the next step of this planning process. Uh, the future direction planning team, which is made up of uh, teachers, parents, community members, uh, approximately 21 individuals, who will take a look at the data that was generated uh, at the workshop and put together uh, some strategies and then eventually some action plans uh, for the next five to 10 years for the district. Um, so this is the next step. Um, um, we're also, I think one of the suggestions that came out of the workshop was the possibility of a, a student representative on the planning team. So that might be uh, something else that we can, uh, we can pursue because I think that was a valuable experience for all of us to have um, such a diverse group there at the workshop. January 12th at the community center was, is when this, this next step will take place. And then after that, uh, action teams will begin to be formed in the, in the spring of the year, creating the action plans for the next five to ten years. Okay. And certainly for those uh, of us who participated, it was, um, it was a great day. And nice to hear that the, um, that the students um, appreciated involvement. It was nice to have them there. Um, we now have the uh, annual report from the Technology Committee. Gary. Gary. Uh, I'd love some reports from the guests. I, I hope this is going to show up with the lights on. Yeah. It's great in my eyeballs. Gary, can we have this in the background all the time when we're meeting? <laughs> You're right. It's my desktop. Gary, before you, you get started, just as a background for people who aren't aware, Gary Illinois, um, we all just say Gary, is, is our uh, technology coordinator. And each year, the technology, uh, there is a five-year uh, plan for, for technology. And each year, we do have an annual update uh, of that report. past um, five years and since the, the beginning of the technology plan and this is this year's annual report 
Here's the original plan that was presented on December 13, 1994. And actually, I was one of the people that presented it as a member of the, the Technology Steering Committee and the person that helped write the original plan. We're in our fifth year. Uh, we've come a long ways. We now have computers in every classroom, network for printing, for email, for the internet. Um, pictures of all three schools with computers in the classroom. Labs in all schools. Um, we're using technology for administration, for teaching and learning. Um, five years ago, we had what, two Apple II labs at the, uh, the middle school, some labs at the high school, but we did not have nearly the access that we have now. Focus of this year's report, I'm going to kind of touch on some of these areas, hardware, software, networking, staffing, staff development, and some future plans. Um, this is the current inventory of statistics that we have, uh, approximate, or pretty close to the exact number of computers in each one of the schools. Uh, this position is becoming, a, seems to be evolving into a town school position, and, and I'm responsible for the town's computers as well in this building and, and other areas. And if you look at the numbers up there, there's uh, four to 500 pieces of equipment when you start talking about some of the peripherals, the printers, the monitors, the displays, the uh, display devices like these types of things, uh, the things hidden in the closet that the normal people don't see, the hubs and switches and those kinds of things. So there's a lot to take care of. Our hardware targets for this particular school year um, what's been happening in, in the past three years is, or on a three-year cycle, we replace a lab in one of the schools each year. Um, three years ago, it was Pond Cove. Uh, last year, um, this, this particular year, it was the middle school, and if things go right, the budget goes through as planned. The high school will be upgraded next year. This is where we spent our money this year, middle school lab and the high school library. Um, most of the new equipment, the new technology, goes right into the hands of the students in the lab. Uh, high school <coughs> library had a, a mismatch of computers from three different years, um, four or five computers purchased each year, and it was very, very difficult to manage, so we replaced them all, all the same kinds of things, and we've not nearly had as many problems or issues in that library this year as we have in the past. Uh, also, there are things called servers, computers, kind of master computers that control things like email and the web, and there's a whole bunch of those that we're responsible for, too. Uh, roughly uh, 10 to 15 different kinds of computers. We've established some software standards, and we're implementing them throughout the district. K through 8, we've pretty much gone with Clarisworks, and now up Appleworks. Uh, at the high school, we pretty much standardized on the Microsoft Office platform. So that's our main piece of software that we use. So that when we're exchanging files back and forth between schools and administration, we're all kind of working on the same platform. Um, networking. This is a big part of, of the job. We've been installing hardware and software to connect to our, our fiber, fiber optic backbone. And we are making progress on that. We're connecting buildings through uh, all the buildings together, and eventually they'll all connect to a, a T1 internet connection. Two of the three are using that now. And new this year is we're filtering internet access in the schools. I just want to touch on those a little bit more. Um, here's our fiber network. We are connecting all of the buildings, including public buildings, together. And the two in yellow are the ones that where the fiber is, is working right now. The high school is connected. Our main fiber distribution, or our main connection, is at the middle school. Uh, Nancy's always said the middle school is in the, the center of the school district anyway. Absolutely. So, but that's also where our fiber comes together. That's where our T1 connection is. Um, the middle school and the Pond Cove school are currently using that T1 line. Um, the plan is to switch the high school over uh, this vacation. It just it takes a lot of time. We have to basically disrupt the network for a couple of days because we need to get around every computer and change some settings. Uh, so that hopefully we'll have all of our schools going to one high-speed internet connection. Um, that should handle our district. Uh, Yarmouth 
as one T1 connection, and they're serving all their schools with that. Uh, the internet access, that's, that's the box, that's the T1. Uh, it's through the main state library network in the PUC. It's free until June of 2001. Uh, after that, there will be a fee involved. If we were paying for a T1 internet connection, we'd probably be paying seven, eight hundred or better dollars a month. That's, that's what that kind of a connection costs. But because of the, the main school library <coughs> program uh, and the PUC, that has been extended until June of, uh, of 2000. High school is going to be connected to that over vacation. And the state is currently working on a, whatever the successor to the main state library network is after June of 2000. I've been assured that whatever this plan is or whatever takes its place will be decided upon um, early next school year so that when we're planning budgets for the following year, um, we'll, be, we'll know that information. It looks like the successor plan, at least now, is going to be some kind of form of E-rate or maybe a state E-rate type thing. Uh, they've built this, this network that serves all the schools and libraries in the state of Maine, and I, I find it hard to believe that it will just disappear after 2001. I think it will continue in some form but there probably will be some fees involved. It won't be the free ride that we're getting now. Internet safety <coughs> is a big thing in our schools, and basically we use four methods, supervision, training, uh, uh, an acceptable use policy, and new this year is filtering. The filtering system that we're using is N2H2 or BESS. It's uh, what a lot of schools in the state of Maine are using. Um, and it's, it works very well. It filters the internet access in all of the schools. Uh, we're, we're using this service called BESS or N2H2. It's got two names, so it's a little confusing, but it's a solution that, that's a combination of uh, technology and human uh, intervention. A lot of systems just block or filter by the use of words, or a certain word is blocked and no access is given to that. Well, these, this particular company also hires uh, people to go and look at sites and review sites. And our server, we have a, a computer, a server on site that uh, all of our computers go through to get out to the internet. It's called a proxying and a caching server. And that's, that gets updated by this N2H2 company uh, regularly because new sites are coming on the internet all the time. So that gets, that's, uh, that's part of our subscription, part of our service, and that gets upgraded. The other benefit to the, this particular server is that it's a caching server. Caching means that it makes a copy on the server. So frequently accessed pages, people will go to the server, to the computer that's on our site through our network speeds and not go out to the internet which in essence improves our internet uh, access. There is options to provide a uh, local override. I had an instance where a high school teacher was doing an internet scavenger hunt and one particular site was blocked and these <coughs> students didn't have access to it. Well, I can get in and, and override individual sites. Um, the company itself also will review sites and block sites those kinds of things. If a, if a student goes to a blocked page, this is what you get. The website you've requested cannot be accessed. You can uh, enter a different URL, search the internet, or explore. Searchopolis is a, a, a search engine by this company that's a filtered search engine, so it returns filtered results. These are the categories, and I've, I've included in this report a uh, near the end after my slides, the filtering methods and a, an expanded version of the, the filtering policy. So you can see what it's all about. Another interesting thing about this server on site is this, this computer emails me every day and uh, <laughs> it gives me statistics. So on this particular day, Friday, December 10th, um, total request that 24,000 is confusing because that's when, when you go to a page, there's graphics on the page, there's text on the page, so it's not 24,000 pages, it's 24,000 bits of information. 
HTML requests as pages. So in this particular day, 4,613 requests. Those are block domains. So 109 people were trying to get to victoriasecrets.com. Which is Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> 27, 27 block requests. Some of these are free internet emails and those kinds of things. So I get information like this and then I also get information on where people are, which computer is, is trying to get to these sites. Now right now, because our high school is on a cable modem, there's only one IP address. So that 117 at the 24.93.149.248, that's all I know is that's from the high school. But then when you go down to the second one, I can see that um, the middle school library, that 246.93 computer, and I can look on my chart and find out which exactly computer that is, um, that had quite a few requests. So we probably tell Hayden about that. Um, the two from the superintendent's office were when I was taking pictures of, of that. I wanted to explain that. Current staffing. We have a technology coordinator and a computer technician. Didn't cooperate with the picture, but he's doing some work on the computer there. And we have two co-curricular positions to help with email and with the webmaster. The, just to make you aware of it, the current technology plan um, projects another half-time position in, in the upcoming budget year. With all of the devices that we're working on, even with the help of a technician, we're talking, you know, four to five hundred pieces of equipment and three hundred or so staff. It's very difficult to, to deal with all of the issues that come up every single day. So we have to prioritize. Um, the next category, staff development. We offered summer training, summer technology training, like I have been for the last two or three years. We've had a group of teachers involved in the Electronic Learning Marketplace project, the Elm project. Um, that's a technology staff development, but it's also uh, based on learning results and assessment. We should have uh, several, uh, nine or ten teachers from Cape Elizabeth hosting uh, projects or activities on this Electronic Learning Marketplace website. Uh, it's designed to be kind of an outline of a project. It might be a, a short-term thing, it might be a whole unit, but information is there that gives you general goals, linking to the main learning results, and uh, in, you can email the teacher for ex additional information. So we've had people involved with that. Uh, we've done a lot of training with our administrative software and our grading packages. We're now doing grading over, over the network at the uh, middle school. We have been doing that at the high school. We do attendance over the network. Uh, all of this requires a lot of training. We did get the National Semiconductor Award, which will entitle us to uh, an internet class. They'll come in and run a course for, uh, I think it's about 14, 15 people, either on site or at national, uh, free of charge. And we do have uh, a large chunk of the money from the national grant is uh, earmarked for staff development. And that's according to, to the national, according to specifics of the grant. Um, the future planning workshop, technology training and access to, to technology was a reoccurring theme. And it's, it's on one of these charts right here. Uh, as you looked around the room at the end of the day, you could see that over and over again. Um, Seymour Papert, author of Mindstorm, Children, Computers, Powerful Ideas. Uh, when he begins working with, or when he was beginning to work with children, uh, and asked what the children were doing, they were doing computer, they were doing logo, they were doing programming. Six months later, when he asked the children what they were doing again, uh, answers like, I'm making a skeleton, or I'm writing a story. Um, how do you absorb the computer? And it goes on to talk about an artist, an artist or a, a, a poet writing a poem. If you go up to a poet, they're not going to say that I'm using a pencil. Um, that pencil has become invisible. It's, a, it's a incorporated into what they're doing, incorporated into their work. And that's what we want, to, want the computer to be like. It's a tool that... Uh, you don't, the quote down there, doesn't mean that you don't think about it, but when you're thinking about what you want to do with it, you're thinking about the subject matter, not the technology itself. What, what about the future? There are some access concerns at the middle school in Pond Cove. Um, we do have 
free labs at the high school. We have uh, a library that has a dozen, 12 to 14 computers. Um, it's not to say that there aren't times when high school students can't get to technology, but I, there is quite a bit there. Each one of the, the other schools, middle school and elementary school, have one lab, and sometimes that's tried up. Sometimes teachers can get to it or not. So there is some access and some concern about um, can we put in another lab? Well, physical space is, is also an issue. So we're going to take a look at something else here that might, might uh, work to, to help <laughs> us do that and improve the access without physically building brick and mortar and, and walls. We need to continue to look at our network. We're doing more and more stuff with our network and it needs, needs to work well. It needs to work fast. So improving the speed of the <coughs> network and the services that we're delivering over. Um, wireless technology. This might be a way to address some of those access issues. And I've got a little, little piece of technology here. It happens to be a laptop. And as I set this up here, no wires. I'm not, I'm running on battery, but I'm not connected to the network like we normally would. And as soon as this wakes up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my browser over here. And we should connect to the internet. And what we're doing is we're using wireless technology. It's a technology very similar to cell phones, or what cell phones use, using radio waves. Here we go. And uh, here's a Cape Elizabeth uh, School Department's web page right there. With no wires attached, no strings. And it's not magic, it's, it's wireless, it's just wireless technology. So what's making this thing work? Let me just set this here. It's this little thing that's over here in the back. <coughs> this, is, this is connected to our network. This is plugged into the wire. <laughs> this little device connects to our network and uh, allows us to connect computers without having to physically wire it up. And you can connect up to uh, 10, 10 computers with this, to this device. So here's another way to, to get access in classrooms. What I'm thinking about or what I'm envisioning is maybe a portable car with you know, 10 of those my car, one of these, plug it in the classroom, and then you've got access to 10, 10 computers right there. We've used Alpha Smart keyboards, but those are basically for word processing. This gives us a full-blown computer with internet access to do everything that we want to do. So those are, those are some potentials for the future. That's connected, that's plugged into our network. That's hardwired to our network like our, all of our other computers are right now. In the conference. Yes. So that's, I've given you some statistics about our, you might ask, well, how much is this technology being used? There's some statistics in here about the proxy server, about our email server, and about our web server uh, that you might find interesting. But it looks, if you look at those, you'll see that the technology is used quite a bit. I'll open it up to any questions. Gary, if you were going to print off of this. Yes, I can print any, anything that I can normally do. Um, I took that up, I, that, little, that little device that's over there sitting in the back, mm -hmm. I put in my office, which is down in the basement of this building. And I went up into Tom's office up on the third floor and connected to the internet from that, checked my email, printed a job to a, a printer that was out sitting next to Mary Bruns. So anything you can do on the network, you can do this way. And you might say, well, why can't we do everything that way? Well, we're not doing, we're not accessing the network at speeds like if you're hardwired. This is great for, you know, a small section of classroom where you can do, where you can provide the extra access right now. Of course, who knows what the technology will be like in the future.
but for right now, it's, it's a way to increase access. This happens to be a, a, an Apple product, but those cards are available uh, for PCs and Macs. Uh, it's, a, it's a technology developed by Lucent, so it's not platform dependent. Mm -hmm. Gary, could you mention uh, a couple of the uh, applications that we're using to help students with special needs that we're currently using and one that we have planned? Sure. We have a, there's one computer at the high school that it's, it's given us a hard time, but we, we finally have it working, I believe, for speak, speech recognition. So uh, I'm actually, as a two-finger typist, I'm waiting for those days when I can dictate to my computer and it will type on the screen. But that is available, and we do have one machine at the high school where the <coughs> students are using that, special ed students. Um, we've recently previewed and are purchasing uh, a scan and read computer that will be in the special ed uh, department. We're having trouble getting people to do talking books, those kinds of things. Well, this particular software and computer, we can scan the text, and it, it reads it aloud to you on the screen. Uh, if you don't know what a word is, you can pop right to the dictionary. It can read the dictionary for you. It can read it various uh, words per minute. So if you need it to be a slower or faster, you, you can adjust it. So this kind of technology, I think, will be great for our, our special, ed, special ed students. You mentioned that it would have cost us $2,000 to have a textbook awarded, but this machine is going to allow us to use it for any textbooks. Save so much money. Right. The initial investment is, is, is the same amount, but then you've got it and you can scan and do any kind of reading material, a printed material, and use it over and over again. Kind of piloting it at the high school and trying one there first, but it looks like something that we'd, we'd want for other schools as well. Other questions? I got a couple. Um, in, in, uh, in terms of of the actual wiring of the T1 line and that type of stuff. Uh, is that going to be enough for X number of years for the amount of access that we're going to be having? Will at some point that become too slow because we have too many people using it at the same time? I think it could potentially be too slow in the future. I'm, I'm also one of these persons that, you know, they say it can run all three schools, but I'd really like to see that. The high school is the place where there's the most technology, so I'm anxious after vacation when we get all three schools on to this T1 line, how things will go. The statistics that I've got from M MSLN right now are that with, with, and the only statistics I have are with the middle school on, because Pond Cove School was just recently added at uh, Thanksgiving, the week, at Thanksgiving, week before Thanksgiving. We switched that over in two or three days. Um, but we're using anywheres from a third to a fifth of the T1 line right now with, or we're, we're using that with the middle school. Um, Pond Cove School has probably about as much technology as the middle school, but the high school has quite a bit more. So, uh, and we also plan to add Thomas Memorial Library to that. Uh, the Main State Library Network has assured me that if we do max out our T1, we can get another one. Um, and it is free until 2001, but then that would be, you know, what happens after that? So we have to look at that. We, we also may explore other options. There's the ATM out there, which is a little bit faster speed. Um, I'm not sure what a T3 line would cost. Those things could potentially be somewhere down the road in the future. Uh, uh, the filtering software that we're using, is, is that a... Uh, do we purchase licenses to that, or is it the service that's offered? We purchase the hardware, and that's paid for, and that's ours now, and it's, they upgrade it. Um, it's basically a subscription that costs a um, dollar per computer per month, and they've recently introduced a new program where there's that little trailer at the bottom of the filtered screen. If we're willing to accept um, advertising, educational type advertising down there. Uh, we can get the, the service free. So the subscription service uh, would not cost us anything. The last one, do we have to use their search engine in order to utilize the block? No. Do with any search engine? No. 
can use any search engine. Right. John? Oh, I'd like to compliment uh, Gary on his presentation and also in reference to the uh, committee meetings that we've had. This is my first year serving on the committee with Jim, and I feel we've had excellent representation from all the schools and also from the municipality, and we've had people from the community. Uh, you put on a good agenda, you explained everything in, in good detail, which I've appreciated because I don't have that much exposure to this field, and also I appreciate your uh, your punch and your cookies at the end. I think that's sometimes a good attraction. But I want to thank everybody that served on the committee. I think there's probably in excess of 15, 16 people. We've had good attendance, and it's uh, been a very lively discussion, and we've come up with some good ideas. And I thank you very much for your, for your interest. Thanks, John. Other comments or questions um, for Gary? Any from the audience? Gary always does these uh, nice high-tech presentations. <coughs> oh, does a good job. I was hoping you would leave. Does that have a handle? Yes, it does. Hmm. Thanks, Gary. How about a reminder, George? Our next meeting is December 20th at 3:15. That's the Technology Committee. Oh. Uh, we're going to uh, do, do we have all of our students here or our, no, I, no? We, we have several of the students that have come from uh, mock trial uh, but the estimate that I had uh, originally was that they would be available around 8.30 or 8.45 so I told the others that they probably should come around 8.30 or 8.45 okay. so we have the mock trial people now we have <laughs> Pete, if you can just give me kind of the high sign when, when, when you feel like we've yeah. got everybody here, that'd be, that'd be okay. good. We're going we're gonna to move on to the principal's reports. And we'll start with, uh, Pete, we'll start with you from the high school. The advantage of having John and Elizabeth give the high school report is that it renders my report meaningless. They've covered everything. They've done a, a great job with it. But I'll find something to talk about. <laughs> The, <laughs> the, I do want to assure you that with all of those things uh, that have been going on that Elizabeth and John mentioned, uh, we were, administration and faculty were in the building uh, still there, hanging on uh, while, they, while they went through their paces. Uh, I want to add my congratulations and thanks to all the students uh, and adults that, uh, that worked so hard in the production uh, since our last meeting, the fall play audition, and then, as Elizabeth mentioned, last night's instrumental and choral music uh, concerts. Uh, uh, again, wonderful experiences. Uh, it's just pure fun to, to see the types of things that uh, our students and our faculty produce. Uh, Elizabeth mentioned the, uh, the pool uh, with a certain degree of uncertainty. I do want to uh, assure students and anybody listening, uh, Sue, helped me take a, a brief tour of the pool and fitness facility today. Uh, we talked with the general contractor and it's looking like things are, are coming very quickly to a close with some of the small frustrations that go along with that. All, all of a sudden, uh, uh, one of the pieces or one of the uh, paints or, or whatever that is uh, critical to the final uh, uh, completion is all of a sudden the wrong color and so they have to send something back and get it again. But, uh, definitely the feeling is that, uh, that they will be uh, out and we will be in at uh, New Year's. Uh, and I know the, not only the swimming team, but the whole community uh, and phys ed classes and everybody else that are going to be able to benefit from that uh, facility are looking forward to that. Just thought I'd uh, give you a glimpse of one other item. That's not, it's not so much that I'm bringing it to you uh, because, um, because you need to pass or act on it. Uh, it's more of a high school uh, policy, but I think it, it, the process would give you a glimpse uh, into the way that we often uh, do work in the high school with our students. I believe strongly that when you have a student body uh, like we have, you take advantage of it and you, you give them uh, as much freedom as they can handle and you listen to them and try to take their ideas and, and uh, improve 
the way that we run things. Uh, one recent example of that would be uh, an initiative that the Student Council has been uh, very active in, and that is uh, in discussions with uh, us uh, regarding uh, our new, this year, new uh, attendance policy, attendance uh, as related to uh, extracurricular, co-curricular participation. In past years, you may be aware that we had uh, kind of a, uh, I usually describe it as uh, be here half a day and you can participate uh, type of program. And I, uh, and, and several of us felt uh, over the years of watching that, that, that uh, we had something going on that, that we didn't think was appropriate, and that was uh, students, uh, instead of looking at that as the kind of the guideline, the minimum guideline, we're looking at that as this is all that's necessary. I, I just have to be here half a day and I can participate in a game or a, a uh, production, a concert or, or whatever. And uh, while it wasn't, it, it certainly didn't become the rule. I, I'm not trying to indicate that. There were uh, enough students that were uh, taking an afternoon off, uh, uh, excused, I'm not saying that they left unexcused, but excused by parents, uh, taking the afternoon off so that they would be ready for a production that evening or for a game, uh, or students that didn't feel all that well in the morning and, and uh, would stay out of school so that they would be ready in time to practice or to rehearse and so forth. So we, we felt that it was a practice that needed tightening and uh, uh, at the beginning of the year, uh, announced that we would be changing that policy and from that point on they would need to, students, if they were going to participate in uh, any practices or games or productions uh, on a given day, needed to arrive at school by 8 o'clock and then stay for the remainder of the day. Seniors with senior privilege were exempted uh, from that. Um, Students brought to our attention, uh, the SAC brought to our attention that they felt that that might be overly stringent. They understood the need to, uh, to adjust, but felt that, uh, that that barely left time for uh, a car breakdown or something like that that could easily happen when, they, when there's only a half hour allowed and no, uh, no grace period, no, um, uh, no warning shot fired across the bow, if you will. Uh, that, that, that the stakes could be very high for one mistake, uh, you know, that they arrive at 801 for reasons beyond their control and uh, all of a sudden they're out of uh, uh, whatever was happening that day for them co in a co-curricular way. So after a series of discussions with them and suggestions from them and, and counter suggestions, we've come to what I think the students have uh, seen as uh, uh, an effective uh, uh, adjustment and what we see as being something that will work for us also and that uh, amounted to moving the time uh, to 820 which is the first period basically saying that uh, okay you, uh, you if you're here by 820 uh, you're okay you, I mean you would have the normal consequences for if it's unexcused and so forth it would be considered a, a cut but as far as your co-curricular participation you would be able to participate if you come after 820 one time in a uh, season or the, the, the season of that particular activity, uh, you uh, would be uh, granted clemency. But the second time and all times after that, you would not be able to uh, participate in co curricular, uh, any co curricular activities. And, and I have to emphasize that includes uh, games, whether they be important games or, uh, or games that are, are uh, uh, without uh, serious consequence, uh, performances. Uh, so forth. We, we know that this will uh, have its, uh, uh, as its result, uh, uh, heartache from time to time, uh, I'm sure. But we've already seen uh, an improvement. Uh, I, I don't think it will result in that many heartaches because students are realizing that this is the uh, policy and practice and are uh, uh, living by it. And I am no longer seeing uh, students leaving at half day uh, to go uh, to to basically rest for the afternoon so they'd be ready for the extracurricular participation. In a, in a recent Cape Insight article, uh, it was mentioned that we were usurping a student's right to try to decide what might be right for their body, that they know their bodies and what they need and so forth. And I would want to uh, assure anybody listening here tonight that that is uh, not at all what we're about. We recognize very clearly that any individual 
uh, knows their uh, body and what they may need to take care of it at a given time. What we are saying is, instead of saying, uh, I know that right now my body is run down and I need a rest so that I can be ready for practice or the concert or the play, uh, we're saying, uh, we recognize your need to rest, uh, uh, rest during the practice or the play and be here in school. We're just saying that we, we'd like to see those two priorities shift. Um, so as I say, it, it's not brought to your attention as something that you need to act on, but uh, I think it was a glimpse of a good policy, I mean a good, uh, a good um, uh, practice and process of the SAC bringing a concern uh, to us, uh, having discussions, and resulting in a uh, change that I think is uh, uh, well accepted by the students, and, uh, and it's something that I feel that we can live with easily too. Stop there. Are there any questions? Are there questions? What was the time, 820? Is that the end of the first period? It's the end of the first period. End of the first period. Yes. Pete, I'm just I'm sort of curious. How does it work on the other end? I understand the 820 rule. What about? When, once they are there, they need to uh, stay there uh, unless they are a student with senior privilege. Or in all of these cases, <laughs> doctor's appointments, college visits, uh, uh, you know, those types of things obviously are, uh, are uh, things that students need to take care of and sometimes they have to be taken care of during the day. Uh, those uh, students aren't affected by those things. It's the, I need to go home because uh, I'm sick. Understandable. They do need to go home, but then they shouldn't be at, at a practice or something. Uh, or I need to go home and rest or, you know, that type of thing. Questions? I'm, I'm guessing that we're getting so, close. Uh, let's see here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess we're a ways away yet. Um, there uh, should be, when we're just about all here, we should have about 11. I, I think there are a couple that may not be here, but uh, I think I'd uh, like to uh, wait just a little bit longer to see if others come. Why don't we finish up the, uh, the principal's reports and then we'll, we'll check in then. We'll uh, go next to Nancy, the middle school. Good evening. Well, I also benefit from two very well-prepared young ladies who do our report, so um, moving on to perhaps some things they didn't cover. We also all enjoyed participating in the workshop on November 22nd. We had five students there. Um, they weren't here tonight, but they also, I checked in with each one of them, and they had um, terrific days. They loved it. One of them stayed late and helped us pick up. Um, part of the glory of that is when your mother has to pick you up, you've got to wait for your mom to get there. But uh, very helpful. And as she was helping us, she was just commenting on how much she enjoyed the day. Checked with the others um, when they returned from the Thanksgiving holiday, and they really enjoyed it. They really enjoyed having a voice at the table and felt that they were well accepted by whatever table group they were in. So um, that was really nice to have them present with us that day as well. The next day was also a staff um, development day uh, for our staff, and what we did on that day is in the morning, we had a presentation by the civil rights team from the Attorney General's office. This was part two of the training that we had first participated back in April of 1997. We have a very active civil rights team in the middle school, and they came and did part two training with our entire staff, and a lot of it is awareness um, and listening to language and to words that are said. Uh, we did some role playing and we used real particular instances from the Cape Elizabeth Middle School, where one of our areas we have to watch most carefully for is in the cafeteria and different things happening there. So we we're really attuned to that. Um, recently in one of our grade levels, we've also um, sent out a communication about just um, asking everyone to maybe have conversations at home with their families about in these times that we are living that anything that comes out of our mouth is really important and that we just need to, when we get angry or frustrated, we need to think more carefully before we say something because anything that is said that is of a harmful nature or something that may sound threatening will be taken with most seriousness. And just to move forward, it's a message we're also reminding the students of in our advisory groups, in our homeroom guidance groups, and throughout our classes, but something we'd really appreciate working with parents and partners um, on those very active discussions. 
The afternoon of the 23rd, our teams met uh, first in some academic subject areas where they kind of brought themselves up to date with different curriculum issues people had been working on throughout the summer in some of our latest assessment efforts through the main assessment portfolio and also through the ELMS project that Gary mentioned. And just taking an, another quick inventory of the assessments we are currently using. And also sharing some um, other new learnings. For instance, Gail Parker was there and headed up the social studies discussion group and did a lot of data collection um, with the group about some of the research she's doing about Maine's role throughout United States history and things that were happening in Maine and finding out once again from the teachers what would be most useful for them to use in their classrooms. So that was a nice connection. Today, um, I also had a meeting with our six teachers who are working on those various assessment uh, programs that I just mentioned, the main assessment portfolio and the ELMS project. We were meeting to really keep each other up to date with the different projects, what we're learning, how they're tied to the main learning results. Most importantly, though, we're getting for the next, ready for the next step. And at our February 17th staff meeting, they will be making a presentation to our staff about what they have learned from the assessment. The ELM project seems to really bring us a lot of information about the design for assessments and a nice template for that. The um, main assessment portfolio seems to have a nicer way of looking at scoring and responding to those assessments. So we, we will be presenting that and then rolling out from there. We hope to, by the end of the year, have a grade level assessment um, in at least one of the subject areas um, that would be part of our comprehensive assessment system. So that's where we think we're going with all of this. The one other thing I would like to add about our band concerts, we did have a very successful concert last week with our fifth grade, fifth and sixth grade chorus, our sixth grade band and seventh grade jazz band. Also, right at the last moment, our accompanist was unable to attend. Um, and I don't think is exactly as when he walked in the door, but close to that, uh, we needed to commandeer Mr. Witherell, who very generously jumped to the keyboard and accompanied our chorus for us. Um, I understand he's on board again for tomorrow night, and um, we'll be doing that. And one of the things I do at the concerts is I really enjoy listening to the music and the variety of different things they're presenting, but I also really enjoy watching all the performers and the smiles on their faces and everything. And I would say that the smile on Mr. Witherell's face was just as big as anyone else who was performing. So it was nice to have you join us, Keith. We appreciate it. And uh, we look forward to your continued performance with us tomorrow night. So thank you very much for that. Are there any questions? Questions for Nancy? I don't think thank so. You. Thanks. And uh, moving on to Pond Cove, Tom. Good evening. Did we pay you scale for that, Keith, or is that just... You just <laughs> yes. You <laughs> That's why he's smiling, I think, Nancy. Um, now I know. <laughs> once again, uh, the, the feedback on the uh, scheduling, I'm thinking back to last month, the scheduling, the th Thanksgiving break was very positive from staff and parents. I think people appreciate having the week off for kids. Um, to echo what I've heard a number of times uh, tonight, the Ponco faculty was very enthusiastic about Monday's district-wide workshop, which included community members and students and other people. And it's um, contributed to the enthusiasm and the sense of positive <laughs> expectation that I believe Tom will have the leadership to follow up on. So everybody's really happy with that. Tuesday, um, Staff Development Days, Nancy mentioned teams at Pond Cove followed up on plans they had actually developed in late August. They not only appreciated the time, but they used the time very well, and they're using team meeting and other planning time um, during the year to follow up on that. Right after Thanksgiving, MEA week went smoothly for change. At least that's so far, that's all I've heard. And since we are in December already, I, want, I had made a promise to you to follow up on uh, some early results of adding the reading position to Pond Cove. And all, as 8-Ball would say, all signs are positive at the moment. Suzanne Hamilton and Deborah Jordan Pearson, as you know, were selected to uh, fill that position. And they, along with Becky Swift, who has been providing reading support in grade two for a number of years, are working not only with students K through four, which is new, but they consult uh, with teachers regularly and have sponsored after-school meeting with teachers, which uh, are optional, but have attracted a fair number of people each time around specific topics in reading and writing. Um, the 
interest and enthusiasm there has spread to uh, faculty meetings and we're able to focus more on improving our literacy instruction K through four. So, so far so good and we really appreciate having that position. Another committee that's going along well, I haven't reported on lately, but since I've attended two of the meetings uh, in the past week, the, the K through 12 science committee is still out there functioning. Regular members of the committee are Susan Mishu and Ingrid Stressinger uh, from Pond Cove, Jill Bell and Tom Wilbur from the middle school, and Kerry Curtis, Doug Worthley, and Beth Lewis are regular attendees at the monthly meeting of the steering committee. As a result of the continued interest from this committee, there's a subcommittee which is looking at the implications and ramifications of course selection and sequence, uh, grade seven through 12. If we're serious about meeting learning results, um, then pathways for all students have to be opened up. So that committee is meeting once a month and working with Peter and Nancy. And then a sub subcommittee, this is what happens when you get people together, of Doug Worthley and Beth Lewis are meeting with Steve Price and Tom Wilbur to specifically discuss transition from eighth grade to ninth grade in science. Um, this work is, is going on um, under our noses. I wanted to give them a little recognition because I think they really deserve it. Finally, and I've been in, in denial about this for some months, uh, but Wendy Dersowick, who has been our first and only ed tech computer person in our lab, is uh, leaving the position in order to uh, add another member to our family, her family. Um, she has set very high standards for this position and we're gonna miss her. Gary and I will be interviewing somebody tomorrow to help, or we'll be interviewing people this week to fill the position. We wish Wendy well, but she did set a very high standard at Pond Cove. Any questions? Questions for Tom? Done? Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. I think we're ready, ready for our recognition piece. We are um, still missing two, but I, there were two that uh, told me they thought they were going to have difficulty being here because of other commitments. Um, each year, uh, our juniors, and, and uh, we also have uh, sophomores taking part in this process, but uh, juniors are, are the ones that actually uh, count in this particular process that I'm going to talk about. Our juniors take the preliminary scholastic aptitude test, and one of the reasons that they take that particular test is to prepare themselves uh, for the scholastic aptitude test, which they tend to take in the end of the junior year or the fall of the senior year uh, as part of their uh, application process for colleges and universities. But another uh, uh, part of the preliminary scholastic aptitude test is that it is, the, it is used as the qualifier for the National Merit Scholarship Program. So each fall, we find out, uh, students find out, as a result of their performance on the PSAT, which, have, uh, which are a measure of verbal and uh, mathematical reasoning abilities, uh, find out um, what their scores are and a very small percentage of these students then become either commended students through the National Merit Scholarship Program or semi-finalists and possibly eventually final finalists in the National Merit Scholarship Program. To be a commended student, you have to realize that um, uh, somewhat over one million students uh, are taking the, uh, one million juniors, 11th grade students are taking the, national, the uh, preliminary <coughs> scholastic aptitude test. And out of these, the approximately the uh, top 50,000 scores, uh, the, the students who earn the top 50,000 scores are recognized as commended students. Uh, quick math will tell you uh, that that's uh, approximately the top 5%, those students that are in the 95th percentile. We're very proud this year to have eight students as commended students, and then the top, uh, again, approximately one to one and a half percent become uh, uh, recognized as semifinalists, and we have three 
semifinalists. This is a very strong result for a school our size to have 11 students, uh, either as commended students or semifinalists. Um, I will turn it over now to Superintendent Forsella uh, to, for the presentation of certificates. And I, just to, to echo what uh, Pete had said, I know in the years that I served as a high school principal, I always waited to see uh, the numbers and the number of commended students and semifinalists. Um, but I was most impressed, and I know last year with the numbers uh, that uh, Cape Elizabeth had, but then to have the similar kinds of numbers uh, this year, I think is an outstanding achievement um, for the high school. So uh, I think it's, it's, it's something that deserves recognition, and the school board uh, has started a, a program this year of recognizing outstanding achievement. Um, and with me are school, school board members who will present the certificates, and I will read uh, the first certificate, and then if, if, if each of you could come forward and receive it. This is a certificate of recognition presented to Elizabeth Sullivan. This certificate is presented by the Cape Elizabeth School Board in recognition of outstanding academic achievement as a National Merit Scholarship Program commended student. Another commended student, Tyler Van Fleet. Another commended student, Alexandra Watson. <laughs> commended student, Phineas Sprague. <laughs> commended student, Alexander Lankowski. <laughs> Commended student Elizabeth Kelsey. <laughs> Commended student Lindsay Groff. Commended student Emily Austin. And semi finalist Christian Conti. Semi finalist Kelly Reed. and semi-finalist Brian White. Thank you all for coming. Um, I would also like to mention we have someone else who couldn't be here in, in recognition. Uh, we did have on the agenda to recognize Paul Jackson, who was, has been recently honored as the State of Maine Golf Coach of the Year, and I think he is in Florida from what I understand. Good place for golf. That's all golfers should be. Well, congratulations to all of those who were recognized. It's quite an outstanding uh, recognition. George, yes. uh, excuse George. me, before we, I mean, uh, Jim. before we leave the subject of golf, yeah. there's one yeah. more piece of follow-up that we have, to, we have to acknowledge tonight. Uh, high school senior Alyssa Hayes was the girls' national champion wow. in a tournament a week and a half ago down in Florida. She came in number two in Maine, but she's the champion of the whole nation. And uh, I think that uh, demands recognition at some point, if not tonight. Absolutely. Okay. 
We're going to move on now to uh, committee reports. And the first uh, report is from our finance committee, and uh, Keith will provide the report. The finance committee met uh, this evening at 6.30 in the Jordan Conference Room. Uh, the first topic of discussion uh, dealt with the PATH's budget and uh, what's going to ultimately be the increase to our, our budget of about $81,000 uh, new over previous year's uh, expenses. Uh, perhaps as much as half of that will be uh, reimbursed back by state subsidy. Uh, uh, Pauline, our business manager, presented us with uh, the, the capital improvement plan for the, uh, the school district. Uh, originally totaling at about uh, 534,000, uh, which was down about 45,000 from last year's number, uh, but we have added a, uh, an additional 50,000 to that line for a, a feasibility study for, for the space issues. Uh, so that's in the works as we wind toward our budget uh, making. Uh, we also discussed the fingerprinting costs. Uh, I'm sure that uh, you're aware of some of the publicity that's been going around. Uh, the state has <coughs> mandated that all school employees uh, uh, go through uh, fingerprinting. Um, and for this school district, that's going to cost uh, a little bit over $18,000. Uh, the Finance Committee is uh, we're waiting until we find out what the state is going to do. There's a movement in the legislature to, to pay uh, at least for some of that. Uh, we also considered a request uh, to add some, uh, I guess, funding or redirect some enterprise money uh, towards the climbing wall, uh, which uh, was declined for now uh, with the suggestion that uh, more fundraising uh, activities uh, be looked into for that. And then we adjourned right before this meeting. Thanks, Keith. Uh, we'll move on to the report out from the policy subcommittee. That's Kevin. Um, policy subcommittee continues to meet on the topic of uh, booster and organization fundraising in the school. We will be meeting again this Thursday morning at 8.30 in the Jordan's conference room. We've invited some additional people to come in to give the committee some background and their insights on uh, <coughs> some of the fundraising issues that have gone on. Um, and that's, that's essentially what we're focusing on right now. The committee would welcome suggestions from anyone who would like to uh, send them in. So our next, uh, next meeting again is December 16th, followed by a meeting on January 13th. Okay. Excuse me, John? Yes. Uh, I would like to request that the, the policy subcommittee uh, visit, uh, if not this coming Thursday, possibly in January, file BEDH, and it's called Public Participation at Board Meetings. And if you have time on this Thursday, I would like to be informed and I would uh, like to be present. Uh, could you please share with me who the other two members are on the committee? Jennifer and Marie. Jen DeSena. Okay. Um, we had planned to try and keep this particular meeting this Thursday sort of on the brief side. Um, some of us have some other commitments. However, we will certainly put that in for the January agenda as there is another board member who has um, uh, submitted a very detailed proposal on uh, that particular topic. Well, I believe my comments were pretty much... Uh, uh, support. I believe it's Mr. Rowe on my left, and I have some comments of my own to expand on that. And uh, if this Thursday is not going to be convenient, then we'll put it on our agenda for you, January. Yes, if you would like, you can carve it onto the agenda as the, uh, the first item um, on January 13th. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Kevin. Um, unfinished business. I don't believe that there is any. Um, and we'll move on to new business. Uh, the first is the consideration of the superintendent's nominations to athletic fee positions. 
would like to nominate and recommend the following individuals to athletic fee positions at the middle school. Nancy Rochette, eighth grade basketball. Matt Whaley, seventh grade girls basketball. Joe Doan, indoor track. And Chris Brunette, middle school swimming. At the high school, um, Alan Bailey, assistant girls varsity basketball. And at the middle school, again, Jeremy LaRose, indoor track. Okay, is there a motion? Jen. I move we accept the superintendent's recommendations for coaching for uh, co athletic fee positions. Okay, seconded by Marie. Any discussion or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7 0. Consideration of the um, the PATHS budget for FY 2001. We did have some discussion of that um, earlier in the finance uh, subcommittee report out. And uh, Kevin, you're going to present this? Yes, just for clarification, there are two pieces of the budget. Part one, which has essentially become a tuition item, and part two, which is new programs and capital equipment, things like that. We are only required to vote on part two which is a total of $6,653.34. Therefore, I would move that we approve the fiscal year 2000-2001 Part 2 budget of Portland Arts and Technology High School in the amount of $6,653.34, along with my periodic plug that PASS represents a unique educational opportunity that I hope everyone would look into. Okay, is there a second? To, uh, a second. The motion, Keith, thank you. Um, any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? And that's 7 0. Moving on to um, consideration of the re election of the superintendent of schools. Um, this is a, a situation that, um, do, do you want to address this? Or? Um, this is a situation uh, which is a state requirement that um, any uh, particularly any new uh, superintendent and, on an, and then on an annual basis that they, um, that we go through the process of a re-election. And um, I think that what we're going to do is we're going to hold on any formal action um, right now, um, not because we have any doubts, <laughs> believe me, um, but we actually have a discussion that will follow um, in an executive session meeting about the evaluation of the superintendent, um, the executive session, of course, is um, is a is sort of a restricted meeting. We will come back into public session again, and um, and make that that motion. Um, so uh, that is on the agenda as item C. Um, it's also uh, under our executive uh, session, and again, we will be coming back into public session um, to uh, take action on that which we fully accept, fully expect will um, move through very quickly and positively. Um, so we'll move on to D, which is um, something that was added to your agenda, and each uh, board member should have in front of them the, not only the uh, resume of the candidate, um, uh, Mark uh, Pendarvis, but as well um, as sort of the uh, summary sheet that, um, that, that's attached. Uh, from the, uh, the interview team. Um, this is a situation where we had a, uh, and the reason it is coming at the last minute because uh, Spanish and foreign languages are, are difficult areas uh, to find candidates. We are fortunate enough to have uh, a well-qualified candidate and rather than wait another month, we felt it was important to get that to you as soon as possible. Uh, so with that being said, I'd like to recommend Mark and Darvis as a Spanish teacher at Cape Elizabeth High School. Is there a motion? Yep. Yeah, John. I was going to ask a question. I'll wait till the motion is made. Um, is there a motion? <coughs> Jennifer. I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation um, to hire Mark Penn Davis. Okay. And seconded? Second. Who's in there? Jim, thank you. Um, John, did, did you have a question? Yes. Well, what level of Spanish will he be teaching? What grades? And how many how many subject hours? Or whatever you call it. Well, we'll uh, Pete. And um, when will he when will he begin? 
He will be uh, teaching <coughs> students from grades 9 through 12 because our uh, Spanish courses are all um, uh, based on the level of Spanish and not on the grade that they're in. He will have two sections of Spanish uh, 1, two, uh, actually we call it 1-1, one, one, uh, two sections of Spanish 22, and one section of Spanish 51, which is a um, higher level next to, it's a Spanish 5. Uh, he would, uh, his uh, beginning date uh, is still to be determined. At the latest, it would be January uh, 15th, uh, but it is possible because he's been working hard with his current school system uh, to ease the transition for them. Uh, it is possible that he will be available uh, right after the Christmas, uh, after the, uh, the Christmas break, depending on if, if they, have their candidate in place then, then uh, but if he has to give the full 30 days notice, then it would go to January 15th. Good, thank you. And Pete, this is a full-time or full -time. part time This, this is, is a full-time full -time position. position. Are there any other questions or comments about the no nomination? Just a general comment on the cover sheet. I thought that was excellent. It was, makes, uh, makes life a lot easier in evaluating last minute results. Right. And um, actually, we're, we're receiving these on all uh, recommendations. Um, no other comments or questions? Um, all those in favor? It's 7 0. Okay. Um, before we uh, take action to go into executive session, I just want to review upcoming dates. Um, dates to remember uh, the financial. Uh, Finance Subcommittee meeting will be January 11th in the year 2000 at 6.30 in the William Jordan Conference Room, followed by the regular school board meeting at 7.30 here in the council chambers. Um, Kevin uh, identified a December 15th, I believe, uh, policy subcommittee. This Thursday, which I believe is the 16th. Is it the 16th? 16th. Yes, sir. Sorry. Um, December 16th um, at 8.30? 8.30. Here at the the Jordan Conference Room and uh, the January meeting of that same group will be Thursday, uh, January 13th, the year 2000 at 8.30 in the morning, same place. Um, yes? I just wanted to mention the uh, probable school board town council joint meeting uh, to discuss budget will, is most likely going to be Tuesday, January 18th. That's the tentative schedule at the moment. We don't have a time. And Mary, we're pretty Obviously. committed on that date, but we just don't have a time, is that right? Okay. Thanks for that reminder. Um, with all of that business covered, um, we have a uh, consideration uh, for a request to enter executive session uh, to discuss teacher negotiations, um, <laughs> secondly, a legal matter, and third, um, the evaluation process for the superintendent, um, after which we will be coming back into public session to um, re-elect, um, as per the state requirement, uh, the superintendent of schools for Cape Elizabeth. Um, I need a motion. George, we won't be coming back into public session on television. No. no. We will come back into public session after the executive session, which will not be televised. Um, Excuse me, when we come back for that vote, that is a vote to extend or renew the superintendent's contract from January 1 of 2000. Is that correct? It's, um, do you un It's for the following, the following school year. It's, so it's not the calendar year, it's the school year. Which begins late August, is that what you're saying? July. 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 Right. Which is already part of Tom's contract. Right. That's when he assumed his responsibilities on July 1st of 99, right? Right. Okay. Did I see another question over here no. before we go? Um, One other John. question. Under B, a legal matter, <coughs> do we need to be more specific to the public why, what that legal matter might be? No. I think it's an advisement by the superintendent of a potential legal matter. Um, is there a motion? Keith? <coughs> I mean, sorry, Kevin. I move that we enter executive session to discuss teacher negotiations. 
the legal matter and then the evaluation of the superintendent. And I believe we do we need to extend an invitation to Pauline for the first two items. Um, yes, we do. <clears throat> and to invite Pauline, a Porsche, our business manager, to join us for the future negotiations and the legal matter item. Very thorough. <laughs> that motion. A second from Jim. And any questions? None. Um, all those in favor? <laughs> and that's 7-0. Thank you very much.